Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Kleena here and today I'm going to be taking you through the solution to question two from this junior cert higher level paper and this question is based on probability. So let's get right into it. We're told that when Maeve's team play a match they can either win which is represented by W, draw which is represented by D or lose which is L. Question A asks us to fill in the table to show the nine possible outcomes when Maeve's team play two matches, one is already done. WD means that they win match one and they draw match two. So this is win from match one and draw from match two. So let's continue to fill this out. So an outcome here is that they win match one and they win match two. They win match one and they draw match two is another outcome that's done for us. Or they could win the first match and lose the second. They could also draw the first and win the second, draw the first and the second, draw the first and lose the second, and then they could lose the first and win the second, lose the first and draw the second, or they could lose the first and lose the second. So that's our box done and let's move on to question B. So in question B we're told that Maeve thinks that each outcome in the table is equally likely. Based on this, find the probability that when Maeve's team play two matches, they win at least one match. Give your answer as a fraction. So we know that our answer is going to be all over nine because there's nine possible situations. Okay, so there's nine boxes here. So there's nine possible outcomes. So how many of those outcomes where they win at least one match? So let's see this and I'm going to use my pink pen. So this is one because they win two. They've won one here, they've won one here, there's a win here, and there's a win here. So we have one, two, three, four, five um, possibilities of them winning at least one match. So that's five over nine. So the probability that when Maeve's team play two matches, they win at least one is five over nine. So for question A and question B, you're going to get a total of 15 marks. Now in question C, we're told that Maeve's team play five matches in a competition. We're asked to work out the total number of different possible outcomes for Maeve's team for these five matches. And we're given an example. One possible outcome could be they win the first match, win the second, lose the third, draw the fourth and win the fifth. So let's have a look at it here. So I'm going to say M1 is match one, match two, match three, match four and match five. So they can either win, draw or lose. So there's three possible outcomes for each match. So there's three possible outcomes for the first match, three possible outcomes for the second and so on. Okay, so now we need to think of our and or rule, which I hope you're familiar with in, in probability. When we say the word and, we need to think multiply. So there's three possibilities for match one and so multiply three possibilities for match two and three possibilities for match three and so on. So that's going to be three to the power of five. Okay, because it's three by three by three by three by three. So we can just leave it as three by five or you can put it into your calculator. Three to the power of five and that is 243 different possible outcomes. So this is our answer here and for this answer you're going to get yourself 10 marks. Now in question D we're dealing with the mean. So we're told that Maeve's team plays 11 matches in a league and the table shows the number of goals that they score in each of the 11 matches. So we're asked to work out the mean number of goals that Maeve's team score per match and to give your answer correct to one decimal place. So to do this, we're going to add up all the goals from all the matches and divide it by 11. So we're going to add up 3 plus 1 plus 1. So I'll tick it off as I go so I'm not forgetting any. Plus 0, so we don't need to put that in. Plus 2. Plus 7. Plus 1. Plus 2. And again, we can forget about the 0. Plus 1 plus 3. And we're going to divide that by 11, because there's 11 matches, okay? So let's add these up. So 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 7 plus 1 
plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 that gives us 21 over 11. So let's divide 21 by 11. That gives us 1.9. So 1.9 goals per match. And it asks us to give our answer correct to one decimal place. So we have it in the correct form. And for this question, you're going to get yourself 10 marks also. Now, question E of this question is definitely the most challenging, but we're going to break it down and go through it step by step. So we're asked to complete a pie chart below to summarize the data above showing the proportion of their games in which Maeve's team scored zero goals, one goal, and so on. Label each sector and the size of the angle clearly, showing any workings and construction lines. So I'm going to draw a little table, okay? So I'm going to say goals and then frequency. So we had zero we had one goals per match, we had two, we had three, and we had seven. How many times did they score zero goals? And I'm going to have to go back up to the data for this. So they scored zero goals one, two times. How many times did they score one goal? They scored one goal one two, three, four times. So I'm going to fill those in first, two and four. Now, how many times did they score two goals? And we're going to go up again here. One, two. And how many times did they score three goals? One, two. So two times for two and three. And how many times did they score seven goals, just the ones. All right, let's just make sure that the frequency here adds up to 11 because they had 11 matches. So two plus four is six, plus two is eight, plus two is 10, plus one is 11. Perfect, so they add up to 11. Now, what we need to do is we need to change these into degrees, okay? So that we can draw them as an angle. So for zero goals, okay, for instance, they happened two over 11 times, okay? So to find this as a degree, we multiply it by 360. So the degrees for zero goals is going to be two divided by 11 multiplied by 360. So that's 65.45 degrees. So I'm gonna round it down to 65 degrees. So now let me try for one goal. So the frequency of one goal was four over 11. And we'll multiply that by 360 degrees. So one goal happened in four out of 11 matches. So four divided by 11, multiply by 360. And that's 130.9 degrees. So I'm gonna round that up to 131 degrees. Now, the frequency of two or three goals was the same as zero. So we don't have to do any calculations there. We can just write that out. So we can say two goals, 65 degrees, three goals, 65 degrees. And now let's work out the degrees for seven goals. So that is one over 11 multiplied by 360. And that'll give us 32.7 degrees so we can round that up to 33 degrees. Okay, so now what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to use your protractor to draw these degrees on this circle and to label them, okay? So obviously mine isn't going to be in any way accurate, okay? But I'm just gonna to draw to show you what it should roughly look like, but your angles should be accurate using your protractor in the exam paper. So I'm just going to draw a rough sketch and label it as it should be labeled. So first of all, I'm going to draw the section for one goal. So this should be 131 degrees approximately. So here we go. And I'm going to write in here one goal. 
131 degrees. So now I'm going to sketch in the degrees for zero goals, two goals and three goals because they're all 65 degrees. So again, just note that I'm just approximating because I'm not using a protractor here. So I'm going to put in here, here and here. So I have zero goals, 65 degrees, two golds, 65 degrees, and three golds, 65 degrees. So then that leaves us at one section for seven golds. And this here should only be 33 degrees. So your circle should look something like this, only your angles should be exact using your protractor to measure the degrees in each case. So for this question, you're going to get a total of five marks and that concludes this question. So thank you very much for listening, guys. I hope this cleared up any queries that you had based on this question and I'll see you all in the next video.